My Bloody Valentine is a Canadian slasher film directed by George Mihalka. A mining town's urban legend becomes reality when a masked miner begins slashing teenagers with a pickaxe. It's up to a small group of miners and their lovers to take him down. The film was very controversial upon its release and underwent a lot of editing, but is now almost completely restored. Hey guys, welcome back to Garage Slasherthon, where every day for the month of October, let me fix that, whoop, we revisit a slasher movie. Today, uh, we're talking about another Canadian slasher film, My Bloody Valentine, which is pretty crazy to think because we already talked about Black Christmas, which was another Canadian slasher film, and I think part of it is they wanted to recapture the success of Black Christmas. What's another holiday we can do? Valentine's Day. And this very much has a lot of the things I like about Black Christmas are present in this movie as well. Black Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day with My Bloody Valentine. We didn't talk about Mother's Day, but there's a trauma movie that's a slasher movie called Mother's Day. How many holidays are we going to get in the slasher genre? Can I recommend one? Here's my pitch. I call it the Hanukkah Harasser, and it's just this guy dressed up as a Hasidic Jew going around stabbing people with a menorah. No? Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Uh, yeah, just like I said with Black Christmas, this is the best use of Canadian taxpayer money possible. I love it. I love to live in a world where Canadian taxpayer dollars went towards making Black Christmas and my bloody Valentine. Uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting how that works in Canada. So this movie was so censored upon its release because it was so violent and so gory and so traumatizing. But when the remake came out in 2009, which I haven't seen and I don't plan on ever watching it really because it kind of looks stupid. When the remake came out, they released a Blu-ray of the original along with the movie. And the Blu-ray had an uncut version, and that's the version I watched was that uncut version. Apparently, that one's not even fully restored. I believe the director said that's about 95% of what the movie looked like, or 90% of what the movie looked like. So there's still, like, he said 3-4 minutes of gross footage that didn't make the final edit and not the restored edit in 2009. Uh, which is a shame because I really want to see this movie uh, in its completion, the way the director intended it to be seen. It's a very fun movie, and I, I think I really like this movie. It's in the top echelon of slasher movies to me because every element of what you want from a slasher movie is present in this movie. I really like the main characters in this movie. This was filmed in Nova Scotia, and you're following this small group of teenagers or miners. Not minors, but like minors, like they actually mine shit. And it really has that small communal feel, which I really like, and really makes you fall in love with the characters a bit more. Everyone has their very unique personality. You have uh, this kind of love triangle going on between three people. And then you have your side characters who are a bit more goofball-y, a bit more hickish, a bit more redneck-y. But they're a fun time. It's a very good blue-collar vibe that this movie has. The idea of having a slasher movie in a mine is a really good idea because mines are very scary when you think of them. They're always on the brink of collapse. They're very dangerous places to be. They're very dark. There's a lot that can go on in a mine. Very claustrophobic as well. So just the idea of having a slasher movie that takes place in a mine, it really makes it interesting to me. I will say they do take advantage of everything you can in a mine, which means there is a scene with a mine cart, which was pretty exhilarating, but uh, I was expecting it to go up full out Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom with like that crazy cart sequence, but they never quite do that. <laughs> Which is fine, that's not really a realistic portrayal of what a minecart does. But yeah, it really takes advantage of the atmosphere of the location of the film. Apparently the director, he really wanted to film this on location. He didn't want this to feel like a set. So they actually found a mining town that was willing to accept the film's production. Again, it was in Nova Scotia. 
and it costs so much money to make the mine safe for there to be a film to clean it up to make it look more presentable for a film and then apparently after that they had to pay even more money to restore it to its normal function which uh yeah, I feel like it was really worth it in the end because they spent around $100,000 just on doing that from what I read. The characters are very simple. They do feel like archetypes, but it kind of works because there's a lot of characters and it's a quick way to fall in love with these characters. The use of archetypes isn't all that bad. I feel like it's something that doesn't get talked about. Like Usually people will talk about archetypes as if it's a bad thing it's not a bad thing to me because in life you encounter archetypes i think it's a bad thing if your movie just consists of archetypes and there's no core character with a deeper thing going on but just the use of archetypes i never thought was very it's not a negative to me by any means and tonally this is very in line with black christmas yes it's a canadian slasher movie that takes place on a holiday but just the tone of it, the feeling, how it feels like dark and sadistic, but still has that really juvenile humor. That's also very present in this movie. So it's something I really liked about Black Christmas. And it's something that I really like about this movie. So yeah, you get really good characters, really good feel, really good location, really good tone. The other thing is to this slasher is really fun to watch. The mining costume of this slasher is really cool. And the fact that he goes around with a pickaxe. It's such a scary thing, just someone going around dressed as a miner with a pickaxe. And the one moment in specific that I really like is all the kids at some point decide to go on a trip to the mine. They're all drunk and having a good time. They decide, let's go in the mine. And then they're in the mine and the slasher is approaching and he's just smashing light bulbs with his pickaxe like that as he approaches them. And it's a really fun scene. Like everything about this is a fun time. For the time, this is a this is definitely a very gory movie. From the get-go, you have this kind of killer who's going around, and he mails someone a human heart, and they just open the box thinking it's going to be a Valentine's gift. Turns out it's a heart. But yeah, I really respect this movie because, firstly, it's a good movie. Secondly, it pushes censorship to such a limit, and it's such a shame that we don't get to see the full movie in its completion, but this is as close as we're going to get. I think people don't really have interest in seeing those extra 3-4 minutes, it's just me. But uh, it's just a fun time. This is back when movies knew how to have fun, you know? Felt very nostalgic to me. I will say this, and it's a recurring theme, and I'm sure people are going to be tired of me saying it. I hate reveals in slasher movies, and this is no exception. This one has an especially bad reveal. It's really... Yeah. It really doesn't make sense. It was executed in a way that I think was trying to be scary, but it just wasn't scary. Axel. Boy. But that said, there's a lot of great moments in this. I love especially one of the characters. He's uh, this older guy who's trying to make sure the kids don't go out at night and he's a bit of a boozer. And there's a scene where he tries to recreate the miner's outfit, the slasher's outfit. And he does like this kind of puppet thing. And it reminded me of uh, Your Next. I'm sure Your Next drew some inspiration from that. But uh, anyway, great movie. Have you seen My Bloody Valentine? This is a fun watch. I highly recommend it if you haven't. Stick around for tomorrow for more Garage Slasher Thon. Take care. Bloody Valentine.